but in most of the examples from the Quran which you gave, it is very difficult to comprehend what the Quran tells before actually the science discovers or invents that particular phenomenon. For example, you said, in the honey, there is healing of humanity in the Quran. And you mentioned it as it's about if a person is maybe say poisoned with a plant, the honey of the plant should be taken. So what is the use, say, of a almighty holy scripture talking about things which you are only able to comprehend after the real invention is made by science? So can you tell me now something from the Quran which will be invented by science later or yet to be invented? Well, that's a very good question that I've mentioned many things about science indirectly saying all this was already discovered earlier. And if Quran says something and after science has discovered, so what's the use? Can you tell me something which science hasn't discovered? Brother, that's the reason the Arabs were advanced in the field of astronomy. Why? Because they read the Quran. The Quran has a lot of information on astronomy. So when they read the Quran, they try and do more investigation. They do more research. And that's how they come to know. Quran is a telegraphic message. It's the book of science only on one subject. In medicine, one subject only requires volumes. So if that way the Quran is, this Quran, most of the human beings, they don't like to read. Oh, such a big book. So if God Almighty wrote in detail, then even a big building, they will require thousands of buildings to contain the message of the Quran. Quran is telegraphic message. So in telegraphic message, many of the Muslims, they read the Quran and they made advances in science. That's the reason we find if you go back into history, the Muslims advanced in science and technology. But you pose the question, forget about the past. What about today? All what I've mentioned has been discovered earlier, but many of them were discovered by Muslims, some by non-Muslims, some by Europeans. What about things which science hasn't discovered? Fine. First, I'll tell you those things which science hasn't established, but yet there are high chances, which Quran has testified, and I believe in it. For example, Quran says in Surah Shura, chapter number 42, verse number 29, that it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has created the creatures in the heaven and the earth and has placed creatures in them. So Quran says there is life beside this earth. Today science hasn't proved there is life beside this earth. Scientists say there are high possibilities that life will be there beside this earth. So they're sending rockets, spaceships, moon, Mars, Quran says there's life beside this earth, I believe in it. Science may discover it tomorrow, after five years, after 10 years, after 100 years, Quran says, I believe in it. Today, there are many hypotheses. How the world will end? It says that the sun will become big and the world will end. The mountains will fall down. The mountains will become smooth. The ocean will swell up. The world will enter into a black hole. Many hypotheses. Many of these hypotheses, not all, they match with the Quran. Quran says in Surah Qiyamah, chapter number 75, verse number 8 and 9, that the sun and the moon, they will join together. The sun will be buried in darkness. If you read Surah Takhvir, chapter number 81, verse 1, 2 and 3, it says that the stars will fall down and lose their luster. The mountain will fall down to utter ruin. The ocean will swell up. It's mentioned in Surah Infitar, chapter number 82, verse 1 and 2 and 3, again the ocean will swell up the stars will fall down. Similar to many of the hypotheses. But Quran says, I believe in it. Quran further says, in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 104, we have created this creation, we will destroy it and create a new creation. Science hasn't discovered that yet. Quran speaks about life after death. Science hasn't proved that yet. Quran speaks about heaven and hell. Science hasn't proved about that. Quran speaks about jinn. Today, psychologists say extraterrestrial power. There are some people who get possessed with jinn. Quran speaks about that. Quran speaks the first man on the earth, was well, Adam, peace be upon him. Science has improved. There are high possibilities science will prove. Now, you may ask me that, Brother Zakir, you gave such a good talk on science and technology, but 100% solid proof. You believe in life after death? You believe in jinn? You believe in heaven and hell? You a doctor? Isn't this unscientific? I said, no, brother. I believe that it is scientific. Suppose whatever the Quran has mentioned, 80% has proved to be 100% correct. I spoke about astronomy, about geology, 
motorcycle, oceanography, botany, biology, zoology. So just hypothetically, 80% of what the Quran has mentioned, suppose, has been proved to be 100% correct. The remaining 20% is ambiguous. Neither right, neither wrong. Not even 0.1% of that 20% which is ambiguous has been proved to be wrong. There is not a single verse of the Quran which can be proved false by established science. Hypothesis. So my logic says when 80% is 100% correct and the remaining 20% is ambiguous, but not even 0.1% of that 20% is proved wrong. So my logic says that even that 20% inshallah will be correct. If not today, tomorrow, after 50 years, after 100 years, after 1000 years, Allah